Right, I'm not too sure how much of this video I'm going to get before I gobble a fly. They're out in force today. I think it's got something to do with rain last night and uh, it's sort of given them a lease of life. And because it rained last night, you can see I'm hanging my, my ground sheet out, trying to dry it out and get rid of all the, all the, the red, wet red dirt. <laughs> Certainly um, dusty and powdery when it's dry, but when it's wet, it can be quite sticky. Anyway, um, we're at, um, I think they called it Salt Creek Rest Area. So it's a lovely little um, treed, um, tabled, uh, it's got some water tanks and things, no toilets though, so you have to be self-contained and um, the road ain't far away. So we have traveled, let me think, it's around about 200 kilometers from Yulara. Just stayed outside Yulara there. Um, good little drive, um, hooked into here. We're gonna stay the night and then we've got a, um, a little bit of a, an easy onslaught to the Kings Canyon. Now we could stay at Kings Canyon uh, as a station and there's a discovery park up there as well but we've got to keep the costs down a little bit so the free camp will do nicely um, and then uh, I think there's a hundred just over a hundred k's I think it is to Kings Canyon from here so we'll do that we'll probably leave here pretty bloody early in the morning so that we could get up to Kings Canyon and beat this kind of heat because uh, it's meant to be a pretty damn good day again tomorrow too so uh, and hotter tomorrow than it is today so that's it, that's where we are right now, and having a great time, loving it. So catch you hopefully um, tomorrow around about Kings Canyon area, ready, <laughs> ready for Jude to have a look to see how many stairs there are to try and get up there. Um, but yeah, we can do it. Catch ya. Already made it, Kings Canyon. Excuse the puffing, but uh, this is just the start of it. He's obviously in an interpretive walk here at the moment to just let you know about the safety features and things before you take it all on. Make sure you've got plenty of water. Wear some of the first aid side of things. We've got one and uh, some supplies. We're on our way. Woohoo! Well, there we go. Kings Canyon Rim Walk. That's the one we're going to try and do today. It says here that it's a uh, Six kilometers and allow three or four hours to do it so time is a race I know <laughs> it's about 10 to 8 we're gonna take our time and uh, at least we started in a nice cool side especially for the uh, the stairs that lay ahead and hopefully once we're up there the rest is fairly cruisy going There we go, I don't know whether you can see them, but there's a few people just starting to go up that. That's what it's all about. Knock that little gut buster off and we'll be good. Araraka, excuse my breathing, was a windswept plain covered with sand dunes 400 million years ago. That sand has become the Medini sandstone of the cliff tops. It is made almost entirely of tough quartz grains cemented with silica. Carmichael sandstone of the slopes is 440 million years old. It's more crumbly because it contains softer minerals mixed with quartz. So obviously where we are standing right now that big rocky stuff and that we see there is the Manini sandstone and then further down in front down into the where we parked the car that's the Carmichael sandstone and it's apparently I guess 40 million years older <laughs> so therefore it's crumblier. Interesting point that when you come walking around, you got a number of these stations around. There's a uh, emergency devices, emergency kit, and there is an emergency number that, uh, well, I'm pushed push to talk straight straight to the ranger. It's like a little RT that's stuck in there. Anyway, don't catch up with you. She's doing great guns. Really proud of her. Here we go. Also along the track, looks like there's the odd little helicopter landing out over there somewhere. That landing there was uh, appropriately just at the top of that big slog.
So what we've got here is examples of cross bedding. These beehive like domes at the top of the range. They are evidence that the Manini sandstone was originally sand dunes. So cross bedding is common on rocks that originated as desert sand dunes. The wind deposited sand in different directions over a period of time. Cross bedding can also be seen in tidal environments but layers are much thinner. Wow! And there you have it. So I guess it's got something to do with all that and you can see how the different different layers are built up in different directions considering the, the wind directions at the time. So pretty evident there. When I came around the corner I thought it was kind of more like fault lines and things, you know. But uh, pretty cool. And look at this. Beautiful trees, lush, lush green. Obviously picked a good good space to grow. So yeah, the uh, colours, the forms, the shapes, the valleys. Oh, there's so much to see in here. It's awesome. Nice and cool too at the moment with the, uh, the breeze just coming down this little valley here. It's a pretty interesting walk. And nice to see this little gut line off to my left here. So chocolate with green foliage. And it continues, look at it. All the way along, look at the beautiful ferns. I think they're called chameleons. I thought they were like cyads or something. Somebody comment. <laughs> they're pretty awesome. And the water that's still here, I mean it rained well back all the real way about three days ago. Still nice pockets of water around. So then we've got to pull the metal ring. Let's see what the gate's here for. I worked it out. The uh, the gate over that bridge is basically a barrier stopping people that come up from the other direction because you can do this shorter walk just to here and then back again. So the gate's there to stop people from crossing over and then clashing with the people are doing the other side. So yeah, makes makes sense. Wow. I think we were just over there. <laughs> yeah, I was on that look lookout over there, that's right. This is the other walk just to here.
Ooh, just round the corner and home awaits. It's amazing. Another cavern there. Mm, what do you call them? Not a cavern. Canyon. Down below, I guess, would be like a Kestrel stream because it flows from a little waterfall back there called Kestrel Falls. Yay, we made it. I think Jude just said it was 10.30, so it's taken us uh, two and a half hours. And yeah, we're filming and taking photos and dawdling and things. Easy peasy, it was good. Feet are feeling a little sore, especially with the one with the plaster on. It's a highly recommended walk, especially for us um, with the RV and the trailer. We haven't been able to get into places like, um, uh, where were we? <laughs> the Bungle Bungles and uh, Uluru you can't climb anyway um, we made it to the Olgas but um, yeah the fact that this is so accessible um, yeah it's awesome it's very popular highly recommended so Kings Canyon check ooh love it What a day, what a day, and just showing one or two flies away. We have done it, Kings Canyon. Wow, you guys, if you ever get the chance, look it up. It is definitely, oh, I mean, yeah, you, Katajuka and, and Uluru were fantastic, um, especially Katajuka. I do like that. Uluru wasn't too bad to actually be there after seeing so much of it on media and things. Finally, here, made it tick. But you get to Katajuka and you don't see so much of its sister, I suppose, so uh, Uluru's sister. And uh, it's kind of like pretty wow. But uh, Kings Canyon, oh, that was that was great. Anyway, a big drive out of Kings Canyon, past where we stayed last night. And then uh, I managed to get all the way out here. Um, just a big, uh, be careful out there with fuel and things. I mean, luckily I had a 20 litre can in the old uh, van. And I would have made it easy, um, but um, I threw it in just in case, and that just gave me the, the better feeling that I was going to make it. And uh, I stretched it all the way out to a, um, I think the, the, I've got it as the garn, but it's something else. Um, so I filled up there, I just put a little splash in to make me through to where it's cheaper over in um, Alice Springs. And then we pulled up at this little uh, spot here called, uh, I think it's Desert, Desert Oaks. So it is one of those uh, kind of like official rest stops because it has a, a long drop toilet and a bit of, bit of barbecue, a bit of barbecue area and um, some water there, non potable water. So um, everybody's starting to come in from their weary adventures and man, there was a lot of people on the road too. So there's a fair, fair few people out here just loving this, this, this I was gonna say summer, but it's, it's winter. And it's about 24 degrees it is just amazing there's a little breeze out good spot though yeah this desert oaks we're about 168 k shy of Alice springs so uh tomorrow i think i'm going to sleep in tomorrow after today's effort let all these guys get ahead of me and uh, we don't have to be in Alice springs until you know 10 11 o'clock 12 o'clock checking or something but uh and we've got about um i think about five days in Alice springs so uh watch out We'll go out there and have a look at Alice Springs and we've got a lot of washing coming your way too. <laughs> Alright, we'll call it quits. We'll see you in Alice Springs tomorrow. Here we go. Welcome to Alice Springs. Yo, okay, welcome back, sweet as RV. Um, what's happened? Well, I'm trying to get my head out of the clouds from Kings Canyon. It was just amazing. Um, yeah, I love it, love it. Just seeing photos now, it's just like, wow, that was an awesome place. So we 
traveled to that um, desert oaks rest area had a great night there we um it was we cooked up a good feed of sausages eggs and onions and a few leftovers um there was about 15 odd people there vance by the time we um, put our head down on the old pillow um i said to jude don't wake up early so uh, we slept until about seven got out put out all our things away and uh, got on the road it was a great trip here to uh, alice springs on the way here, we got a text message from um, Discovery Parks saying that you know your site's all ready to go. Come and pick up the old package at the reception, and uh, you know we turned up, got ushered through the gates with a swipe card. And uh, man, this park is huge. It's got um, kids' facilities. It's got water slide, swimming pools, um, some of the biggest bathrooms I've ever seen. Um, this is the um, the cook area and it is terrific and our car park I mean we've got the van the awning a bit of space the trailer huge amount of room so um, yeah looking forward to what lies ahead um, Alice Springs is a, a bit of a mystery to me I don't know don't know what to expect we're going to go to the information center and um, see what we can go and do so stay tuned but also stay tuned there is an, a major event going on here in Alice Springs and we'll bring it to you hopefully tomorrow with a few little teasers. <laughs> Love it. I've got to go and do a sunset. We just got a text, a sunset nibbles. So go and check it out. Go and walk about. What do you know? The day I go and get a haircut and the weather changes. <laughs> it was getting pretty warm. Mind you it's 24 degrees today. And there's a little bit of a breeze around. But uh, yeah, we're taking it easy today, just done some research, and um, we're heading down to the um, Alice Springs Brewing Company. So uh, apparently they're doing real mean ginger beer and uh, passion fruit or something like that. We're going to try them out, see what they're all about. That's if we can get in the door, because apparently it's pretty popular. So uh, see you there. So we made it, it was open. We're at uh, ASBC, which stands for Alice Springs Brewing Company. We've got a couple of glasses, we've got a nice ginger beer, and I think we've got something that's passion fruit or something beer. Um, Wednesday is today, and they do $1 wings all day, so choice of barbecue and uh, what was the other one? Oh, buffalo. Um, and then tomorrow, we could be down here tomorrow actually, $10 pizzas. Friday happy hour and then we leave on are we leaving Saturday? Half, half price burgers. So, so that's the meal is pretty damn nice. Good reasonable prices as well. Yeah, yeah. Sunday we leave. They closed on Mondays and Tuesdays, so cheers. I've just left the uh, little spot there and um, drove past this awesome, amazing gravesite. Oh, I wish I was a historian. Um, it is kind of like written down here, but it's just so hard to, to try and bring it through to you. But this, um, the Stuart Town Cemetery is uh, declared a heritage place. It's important as it's the last resting place for many of the town's early settlers. It has a list of all their um, ages and what they died of and things, but um, it dates back to about 1888 to 1933, I think. Fred Spicer. I think he's got something to do, I know, with the Spicer Rangers. Fred Spicer was a stock agent and he was in a riding accident while inspecting cattle in Undula Station. It's interesting to note too that um, when the town was first surveyed in 1888, no provisions were made for a cemetery and the death of Fred Spicer in a riding accident in November 1889 prompted the authorities in Adelaide to act and the cemetery reserve was formally proclaimed. You've got uh, Frank 
Rhys George, he was a geologist. Um, Anne Beatrice Raggett was a uh, the wife of the storekeeper, Teamster Pastoral. Yeah, she died of typhoid, uh, which broke out in Stuart. This, of course, this town used to be called Stuart. Um, and then further up, um, there's a cook, um, Cadlow. Um, that's interesting, uh, he died in the Temple Bar well from suffocation caused by foul air at the bottom of the well. Now here's an interesting one, James Cummings, pastoralist and horse racing enthusiast. He actually died, uh, he's actually buried along Allery Creek west of Alice Springs. Um, his great uncle of uh, legendary horse trainer Bart Cummings. Well, well, well. So uh, a great, there's there may be up to 71 people buried in this cemetery. Yeah, well how's that? Cemeteries. I mean, respect to all those people out there that have uh, been before us and uh, worked this land. And uh, it's really interesting to read, you know, how some of those people, you know, down building a well and looking after general stores and things like that. And, uh, well, how's that? Racing enthusiasts, the town of Stewart. It's interesting. I saw this place as I was heading to another memorial. <laughs> so join me as we get to the next one. Well there you go, got here in the nick of time, just to catch the garn coming on into Alice Springs in one of my, uh, one of my bucket lists, never thought I'd get the opportunity to actually see it come on in, honestly, wanted to be waiting on the pair for it, but uh, look at that, way longer than I expected, um, I couldn't tell you where it comes from. It goes from Darwin to Adelaide. So um, I don't know which way is Darwin and which way is Adelaide at the moment. Let me think, sun's rising there, sitting over there. So, so I'd say Darwin it's come from and it's going to Adelaide. What do you reckon about that? We did it. All right, seen it. Seen it, a, seen it a couple of times, yeah. Well, hey, gun's never late then. It's obviously uh, either early or bang on time. 78 work started on the planned 1800 mile railway between the southern and northern shores. Slowly the line was pushed up from Port Augusta to Unidata where it stopped for nearly 40 years. In that time camel trains run to Alice Springs ferrying passengers and freight up from Unidata when the railway reached the Alice. In 1929 the train became known affectionately as the Garn. The story of how it received this famous nickname will probably always remain in doubt. Throughout its long and valuable service it has been variously known as the Afghan Express, the Afghan Special, the Royal Garn, Flash Garn. However each of the rival stories has one thing in common. The name derives from those hardy Afghans who ran the old time camel communication network in Australia outback. Alice Springs from the Cooperpedia end, you're greeted by the uh, the old Garn train. The old relic's been uh, rested up here for everyone to see as they come on in. It's also an advertisement for the, uh, I think it's the railway museum is it? For the transport history. Alrighty, now I did mention when we were at the park that there was an exciting thing happening in Alice. Remember I was in Kalgoorlie and the Kalgoorlie Desert Races were on? Wow! What do you know, the chances of being in Alice Springs while the Fink des Desert Race is on. So um, there's lots of action around the motor park, there's, uh, well the caravan park that we're in, there's um, motorbikes and little buggies all set up, that's where they come back to obviously stay the night. Um, and then down here I was at uh, Hostech, Alice Hostech and uh, noticed a, a nice little display of shiny buggies. 
So uh, I thought it was a good opportunity to come on down and uh, just get a little picky with these things. So that's what's on, the Fink Desert Racers, go figure. Um, don't quote me, but it's a 250k ride to the Fink and then and they stay the night and then another 250k ride back. So it's a good challenge of man and machine. So uh, yeah, pretty buzzed to be able to be here at that time. Yeah, everything's just falling into place. Jude and I, we're gonna walk down and see the uh, the Fink markets. There's a, there's a night market here at um, Alice Springs. It's the first night market. So it's meant to be a bit of a boomer and it's coincided with the uh, the Fink's Desert Race. So uh, we should be able to see a little bit of everything. So uh, go and check it out, eh? Um, I've been wondering why the big queue at this one here. So be on the lookout for 487 because well, I'm not too sure whether he's piloting or not, but he is taking part. Toby Price. No wonder there's a big queue here, getting a big old signing from him. Alright, <laughs> just been down to the markets for the Fink. Oh, this cheeky little beast. Um, yeah, wow, what a turnout for the town. Man, there's every man and his dog down there. It was so busy. It was amazing. It was good. Yeah. Smells of foods from all different uh, cultures and things, really nice. And some nice um, cultural art and things there too, which is good, good to see. Um, one big thing I want to point on, and um, you get a lot of um, issues on the uh, social media and bits and pieces on, on how uncomfortable you may feel here in um, a lot of places like this, but Alice Springs. And Jude, how you felt? Fine, fine. Fine, pretty damn good. I mean, we've been through obviously Kalgoorlie, been through Fitzroy Crossing, we've been through Halls Creek and places like that. Never had and a problem. Yeah, I mean, you always get social media sort of beaten into it. Yeah, lock your stuff up. Don't leave things out in the open. Um, don't really venture out too much at night and otherwise you could be asking for it. But um, there is so much control going on around here as well with, um, excuse all the traffic. <laughs> extra policing, um, lots of cameras around, and um, lots of um, lots of signs, lots of signers saying, you know, lock your vehicles away and things. So honestly, if, if you all worry about stuff like that, you'll never leave your home. So um, just take the precautions and get out there and enjoy it. Yep. Thank you, Alice, you've done well. <laughs>